Hey guys, I'm not going to be in class today, but I'm going to teach you a little bit about hippo, hippo doggies, you know hippo doggies, and some Vesper geometry. Alright, so right now, let's just jump right into it. You ready for this? Vesper, which actually should be Vesper or something like that, but it is, stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Model. Yeah, write that down. Actually, in general, you might need to pause this video quite a bit to write some notes down. But here you go. So this is Vesper, and um, it's this idea that there are two different types of electrons that surround an atom. There are the bonding pairs, which you can see in NH3 here, one, two, three, and then there are the non-bonding pairs. All right. So these right here, you can look at this, and you can say this is going to be very, very electronegative. This is going to have a bunch of different, not different, but two electrons up in here, and it's going to be very, very negative E. Well, these over here would be more or less positive E, especially with hydrogen, because the two electrons that will be shared between the nitrogen and the hydrogen will kind of be in between them, right in this area. And so on the outside here, you're going to be very positive E. So you're going to have two different parts of this molecule. You're going to have the positive part, which is kind of the bottom, and it's positive V, and this one right here, which is mean negative E. All right? So the main thing is you take the shapes that we learned last class and we apply this concept that the bonded pairs are going to be different than the non-bonded pair, okay? The electron pairs are always going to be as far away from each other as possible, all right? And consequently, we can predict the shape of the molecule. All right, so let's look at these types of electron pairs. Um, first off, we already talked about electron domains, but just to kind of reemphasize it. It's an area of space occupied by a lone pair or a bonding pair. So this one right here has four lobes or doma electron domains. Electron domains are the lobes. So lobe one, lobe two, lobe three, and this is also a lobe, all right? Lobe four, these are the four electron domains. Consequently, this would be an sp3 hybridized orbital. We have the lone pair electrons up here. These are the non-bonding ones, and we have the bonding uh, pair electrons. Now one thing that we don't have in here are double or triple bonds, but it also counts. So let's look at this A right here. Can't really see the bottom of it too well. One, two, three, four domains. This counts as one domain. This is where the electrons are going to live. So that's one domain. All right. So we have five basic electron domain geometries. These are the ones we've already learned. This includes the linear, the trigonal planar, the tetrahedral, the trigonal bipyramidal, and the octahedral. You've learned these. You already know these. It's awesome. They're great. All right. All of the molecules have one of these five. Okay. But sometimes it's a little bit different. And they differ based on what's living, what kind of electrons are in these. Is it going to be all of them are going to be bonds? Or are all of them going to be electron, uh, lone electrons, which is like a noble gas? Or are they going to be a combination? So we're going to learn about those. Also, you have a whole sheet of this on the back of your homework that lists all of these, by the way. So, molecular geometries. Um, so the electron domain geometry is including all of the electron pairs. We've already learned that. This one right here would be tetrahedral. But the molecular geometries, and this is what's new, is the geometry of the bonding pair electrons only around it, okay? You ignore the lone pairs, all right? So in this one right here, before this is tetrahedral, but we actually ignore this top part, which makes it the molecular geometry trigonal pyramidal. Yes, okay? So this is kind of the difference here, is we take that same kind of shape, but we ignore the lone pairs. So let's look at the linear ones. Well, the linear one's pretty easy because that's it. There's only one molecular geometry, and that's linear. All right? If there are two atoms in the molecule, you, it's going to be linear. That's it. That's just what it is. So there's nothing special about this. This is the exact same. So here's the electron domain. Bam, bam. Bonding domains. There's two of them that are bonding, one and two. And there is zero non-bonding. There was another non-bonding, then... It wouldn't be linear. I don't know. So, next one. This will be a much better example. Now we have trigonal planar. So here's our trigonal planar. We had an atom. We had three different places where the electrons can live, right? 
But now, and that's going to be trigonal planar. And if all of them are bonds, bam, it's still called trigonal planar. That's what the molecular geometry is. But sometimes one of those domains will be occupied with the lone pair. And that's what you're going to see right here. This right here is called bent. This is a bent trigonal planar. That means that you have two of the three as bonds and one of the three as a lone pair. All right, there's a very famous molecule that has this, but you'll kind of discover that a little bit later. All right, and those are the two. That's it for a trigonal planar. Just trigonal planar kind of straight up and trigonal planar bent. Now with tetrahedral, we have a few different options, okay? We have just the common tetrahedral, right? And if all four of them are all bonds, then it maintains its original name of tetrahedral. But if one of those becomes a lone electron pair, this is now called trigonal pyramidal. And then, oop, actually this is the famous one I referenced earlier, my bad. Then if we have two bonds and two lone electron pairs, then this one right here would be called bent. All right, so one electron pair, lone electron pair, trigonal pyramidal, two elect lone electron pairs, you have bent. Cool. That's all we have for tetrahedral. Now, for trigonal bipyramidal, we have two things. And I referenced these earlier, but let's talk about These are the axial bonds. Remember, kind of like the Earth. They're like the North and the South Pole, the axial. And these are equatorial bonds around the center. And this is going to be important because I'm going to be naming some of these things. So, here we go. In the trigonal bipyramidal, we have lots of different options. You're, oh my gosh, there's so many. It's going to be fine. You're going to love it. So if they are all, once again, if they are all bonds, then trigonal bipyramidal, once again. If one of them is a non-bonding lone electron pair, then bam, this is called a seesaw. Isn't that cute? So cute. And then this one right here is called a T-shape. A T-shape has two lone electron pairs and three bonds. And then this one right here is called linear. And you're like, well, how would you tell the difference between like a linear linear and this one? Well, this one has five different domains, but I would actually specify and say, oh, it's a linear trigonal bipyramidal. Okay. And in this one, all of the equatorial bonds are lone pairs, while the axial, uh, the axial are actual bonds. Okay. Finally, we have octahedral. Octahedral, if all of them, if all six of them are bonds, you have octahedral, just straight up. If you have one of them as a lone pair, then it be, is called square pyramidal. And if you have two of them as lone pairs, then you have something called square planar. And it looks like that, where kind of the axials are lone pairs and the equatorials are the bonding ones. Cool. So kind of to review here, is we still have our five main shapes right here, one, two, three, four, five, but depending on what kind of electron what kind of electrons are in there, whether or not they are bonded electrons or if they're lone electron pairs, that actually determines its molecular geometry. So electron domain geometry, general shape, molecular geometry, a bit more specific, and sometimes you have to kind of reference both. On some of them you say, oh, I'm talking about linear trigonal bipyramidal, something like that. Okay, now it's your turn. You, you, right there. Spencer, you. All right, so I want you to, oh, you, now you can see the answers. Don't look at the answers. Oh, my goodness. I want you to tell me what the Lewis dot structure is, because you still need to do that first, and then determine the electron geometry, which we did last, and then the molecular geometry, okay? And we'll start off with this one right here. So we have carbon dioxide. You guys are doing it. Pause. Actually do it. I'm going to kind of test yourself out here. Okay? Don't look at the answers. Don't cheat yourself with the knowledge. You're only cheating yourself. Ain't that right, Hippo? Hippo, come here. Hey, hey. Come here. All right. Now. Sometimes we have multiple geometries in one molecule. What? Which one I'm talking about? So in larger molecules, look at this one. This would be like a C2O2H4, something like that. They have different domains throughout the molecule. 
So this carbon right here would have one, two, three, four. So it'd be an SP3. This one right here is one, two, three. So this would be an SP2 probably. And this one would be, thus it would have a trigonal planar. And then we have one, two, three, four. It'd be tetrahedral. It'd be an SP3, something like that. Okay, now you try. Look at this beautiful molecule. Tell me what all these ones are. Ah, oh, man, the answers are on it again. You lucky little boogers. But kind of test yourself. What's on this one? Oh, it's trigonal pyramidal. Oh, trigonal pyramidal, that's the molecular geometry because it goes one, two, three, because one of them is a lone pair. Oh, look at this carbon. All four of them are tetrahedral. I mean, all four of them are bonded pairs, thus it's tetrahedral. Here, one, two, three, trigonal planar, one, two, out of the four, thus it is bent. Pretty nifty. All right, now we, what you guys are going to do for your homework today is you are going to build these model sets. There's a handout. There's a model set. Number one, don't play around with these model sets and get them all messed up. Pick them up off the ground. You are not allowed to leave until the ground is clean of these model sets. Okay, that's number one. Number two, um, the color scheme that is listed on your worksheet is 100% wrong. All right, that was written for a different model set. We don't have enough of those model sets, and they're janky anyways. All right, with these model sets, you'll find a paper, and the paper says, oh, the black one is going to have this kind of orbitals and this and that. Okay, so what you're going to try and do is you're going to try and build these different mo molecules. And when you're building these molecules, the double bonds are kind of tricky. They have like a little, like a little bent one, and this, uh, that's kind of tricky. And what you should try to do is work in class to get these and then compare them with other groups. Be like, hey, what'd you guys get for the, like the C, Cl2, H, and share them in this and that, and make sure you clean up at the end. And lastly, on that handout, there are some shaded parts of the table. Do not worry about the shaded parts. We're going to talk about that. It talks about polarity and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's a quick rundown. I, uh, hopefully you paused and you took some notes and stuff like that. This PowerPoint presentation will be on the, uh, the canvas. And that's that. You guys want to see the puppy one more time? Let's see the puppy. Hey, come here. Hey. Hey. Hey, Pooh. Come here. Hey. Oh, you're being a stubborn dog. Hey. Come here. Come here. Oh, there he is. There he is. There's a puppy dog. There's a puppy dog. Oh, he's so sleepy. Oh, sleepy puppy. Sleepy puppy. Bye bye. Oh, Hippo's gonna wait too. Oh, he's up. All right. Goodbye. Uh, yeah.